My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. This episode is all about professional backpacking and outdoor tips that are gonna take your outdoor experiences to the next level. Over the years with my experiences in the outdoors and on some of the most popular trails in the United States, I've encountered a lot of people as you can imagine. A lot of campers, backpackers, hikers, and so on. With all of those men and women that I've encountered out on the trail, I've picked up on a number of situations, a number of processes where I see people struggling. It's in this episode that I'm going to share with you all not only what people are struggling with, but with the solutions. Solutions that are going to make your life much, much easier out on the trail. Not only have I encountered individuals out on the trail, but also in the forest, but also on YouTube. There's other YouTube channels very similar to mine where I've seen those individuals struggling. That is not a knock on those channels at all. The thing is this, with experience out in the field, you pick up on some things that are going to make your life easier. And that is what this episode is all about. <laughs> With every issue that I'm speaking of in this episode, I've learned the hard way. I've had those struggles, I've had those issues, and these are the solutions that I've come up with for those issues. Pro tip number one involves a tarp. I will show you all how to fold this up in three moves. This method involves absolutely no struggle at all. It is very, very simple, and you won't have to worry about air pockets at all. What I have here is a square tarp. This method will work with square tarps as well as rectangular shaped tarps. When your adventure is over and you're breaking down camp, this is what I want you to do. Take your tarp, lay it down flat on the ground, walk to the center of the tarp and find the center. Imagine a straight line going directly across the tarp. Think of that as a center line. Over there is one end, over here is the other end, and right here is the center. What I want you to do is this. Grab one corner, Grab the other corner and put them together. With your right hand, grab the center of the tarp. Now step off of the tarp and pull your hands away from each other. Boom. And just like that, your tarp is ready to be folded. Allow me to show you this one more time. Again, this is what you do. Step one, step two, step three. Grab. Grab, grab the center with your right hand, now pull apart. And just like that, this tarp is ready to be folded. That, my friends, is a pro level tip when it comes to folding and putting up your tarp. That is super simple, super fast, and there's no air pockets to contend with. Now, folks, let's move on to tip number two. Did you know that there's a right way and a wrong way to store your sleeping bag into its stuff sack? As I'm stuffing the bag here, everything's going well, at least in the beginning. But as I'm stuffing this, the problem is beginning to become apparent. Take a look at this. This is known as ballooning. When your sleeping bag is fully lofted, there's quite a bit of air, not only inside of the bag itself, but in the insulation. So when you begin stuffing your sleeping bag at the head, you're pushing all of the air down towards the foot box where it gets trapped, creating a balloon. That is why you always begin stuffing your sleeping bag at the foot box. That way you're pushing all of the air out of the head hole of the sleeping bag. Have you ever been out on a trip where you're digging through your backpack, you're looking for something because you cannot remember where you put it? I have, I definitely have. The next tip that I have for you all deals with your backpack and the way that you organize your gear. It's very common for those who are new to the outdoors, new to hiking and backpacking. When it comes to looking for a backpack, they look for a backpack that has the most pockets. Two pockets in the lid, pockets on the side, pockets in the front, pocket in the bottom, side pockets, sleeves. They're thinking to themselves that they are going to stay ultra organized for their adventure. But the thing is this, when you have gear spread out all over the place and you're going out for a trip that lasts two or three days and you're doing it ever so often, you are not going to remember everywhere that you put that gear. The solution to this problem is right here. What we have are kit bags. These come in all sorts of different styles, colors, weights. Some can be very inexpensive while some can cost a lot. It really does depend on the materials that you want and just how little you want them to weigh. Think of these bags as the ultimate way to organize your gear. For an example, this is my fire kit and cook kit and everything that I need for those purposes is inside of this bag. Spoon, spork, pot, 
cup, stove, fuel. I have a wood stove inside of this, and I also have methods to start a fire. This is my food bag, and inside of this I keep food, snacks, coffee, energy drinks. I keep a little bit of rope so I can throw this up in a tree as a bear bag. I have all sorts of kit bags that organize my gear, including a power kit that has a charging cable, battery pack, lights, headlamp, and so on. I have a miscellaneous kit that has my first aid kit in it, some cordage, and some miscellaneous items that I may need along the way. Knowing exactly where your gear is instead of fumbling around looking for it, that is a pro move. The next pro tip that I have for you all involves cordage. I highly recommend that you have at least some cordage with you. That way you can address a number of problems that could arise out on the field, out on the trail. What matters the most is that you have cord with you. It doesn't matter if you carry 550 cord or something ultra light such as microcord. It's all about making sure that you have cordage with you so that you can solve any problems that come up. For an example, with a lightweight roll of cordage like this, you could solve all sorts of problems. You can secure gear, you can make repairs on your tent, you could solve issues with your tarp, you could solve problems with your backpack, with your shoes. It's incredibly versatile, and it really is vital for emergency situations. In addition to everything I've stated so far, you can use cordage for so many different things. Bear line, you can use it to tie down your tent, to anchor it to the ground. You can mark trails if you get lost. You can make a splint, a tourniquet, or you could even use it to make fire. Or you can use it as fire starter. Or how about this, if you have the skills, you can even take this and make a repair kit out of it. Here's an example, it's breezy, a stick falls from the tree, it goes right through the fly of your tent. You can use cordage to seal that hole. I know it sounds impossible, but it's not. Most cordage out on the market today is synthetic. It's made from plastic, from petroleum. You can heat it up, you can melt it, and you can make repairs. For tip number five, I'm talking about a good old-fashioned headlamp. The importance of a good headlamp cannot be understated. And it's not for the obvious reasons that you may be thinking. Yes, these put out light, you use them at nighttime, not only for hiking purposes, but for around camp and so on. I'm sure you know this already, but bugs are far more attracted to bright white light, blue light, green light. But did you know this, folks? Bugs are far less attracted to red light. Red light is part of the visible spectrum that includes longer wavelengths, and it does not attract bugs. In other words, they have a lower sensitivity to this wavelength. Because of this, it's a great idea to have a headlamp that features a red LED. That way you can use this light right before you go to bed, right before you get inside of your tent. So a few minutes before you go to bed, turn out all the lights, let the bugs dissipate. Turn on your red light, use this to open up the door. Use this light to get inside. That way, when you zip it up, you don't have to worry about a whole tent full of mosquitoes, moths, and so on. Those are the first five pro tips that I have for this series. More are coming up in the future. Before I go though, I have one more that's gonna make your life nice and easy, a whole lot simpler, and also cleaner. Inside of the vehicle that you're taking for your backpacking camping trip, it's a good idea to keep a large dry bag. This is for wet, dirty items. That way, when you get back from your trip, let's say you have a soaking wet tent or a tarp or your rain gear's wet, your shoes are dirty, you could take all of that gear and put it inside of your dry bag. You can also use contractor bags if you want to. Trash bags really don't work that well because they're so weak. Contractor bags, they're a good option. Or you could get yourself a lightweight, very large size dry bag. Something like this is going to last you forever. It's fully waterproof. So let's say you put all of your wet, dirty gear inside of this. It's not going to leak inside of your vehicle and your vehicle is going to stay clean. If you have to, you can fit your entire pack inside of this bag. This tip here is going to help you not only with wet, dirty gear, but also with moisture inside of your vehicle. I'm not sure if you've ever experienced this or not, but I certainly have. I go out for a trip. It's raining. Everything's soaking wet. I get back to the vehicle. I put my gear inside of the vehicle without a dry bag and all of a sudden, every window in the vehicle begins to like fog up. That's because of evaporation, that moisture is beginning to lift off of your gear. And where is it gonna go? It's gonna go right to your windows. Now you have the issue of not being able to see outside of your window while you're driving. Something like this is going to prevent that from happening. And at the same time, it's going to keep your vehicle nice and clean and also dry. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, if you found these tips helpful, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel. Consider subscribing if you want to. More important pro tips are coming up. Take care, everyone. Be well. Strength and honor.